Hello, hello, everybody. It's almost time to get started. Hey, Michelle, welcome in. Hey, everybody. Good evening. So I understand that uh, you have a little surprise for us at the end. You're going to do a little demo. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you meant Skelly. That Skelly too. New shirt tonight. Oh, my shirt God. Tonight. Yeah. Look at <laughs> Skelly said he did it. He wanted to be a zebra. So, oh my gosh, Thank he has you. A to match my shirt. So, oh. kind of not I'm, as good as John's. I'm but. representing my uh, zebra shirt too tonight. So, <laughs> yeah, we're rocking it. Okay, awesome. That is so cool, Michelle. And he has a baby Yoda with him, I see. He does. Baby Yoda is going to hold the IV fluid when we do our vasoactive drugs. Oh my gosh, this is too cute. <laughs> you guys, Michelle sewed the skeleton clothes, skelly clothes, I'm telling you. This is this is the place to be if you wanna have some fun. So while we're waiting for everybody to log on and get started officially at 5.30, uh, Leanna's saying hello from Washington State, yay. Um, if anybody still needs the workbook, um, let us know. I see that Sarah's here, hi, Sarah. Um, so if you need the workbook, let us know. Tori is also here with us on Facebook and Zoom. She can drop you the link. Just so you know, uh, the workbook, if you want it sent to you, it gets sent in Messenger. You just click a link, click I want the workbook, and it sends it right over to you. We are going to be using it tonight, so it is important to have it. And um, yeah, I think that's everything. Also, the replay um, is in the guide section. Now, yesterday, Michelle and I were looking in the chats that we used to have in this group until yesterday. And there was someone who, there was like two people who were claiming to be us and asking people to uh, pay a credit card to watch our replays. That was not us. Um, Ruben made a post about it, but yeah, that was definitely not us. This whole three days is completely free. So welcome in, Basma. Um, so yeah, anyway, don't be uh, stymied by any crazy scammers. And we think we've deleted all of them, but you know how spammers are, spammers be spammers. So if you see anything, uh, report it to me and I'll definitely get them kicked out. But in the meantime, we are getting ready to have an awesome night. So it looks like Bosma needs the workbook, Tori. And also um, tonight, just to let you know how it's gonna go, in case you missed last night, we were going to do a lesson for you in the main group here. And if you are on Facebook with us, jump onto the Zoom because we want to make sure that we can um, get in with you guys um, and when we do the breakouts. Because when we're done with our main lesson in this group, we're going to go into the breakout sessions. And those are going to be on Zoom only, and those are not recorded. That is good, but that is also bad. Because if they're not recorded, you can't obviously rewatch them. But it's also good because if you want to ask a question that you think is quote unquote dumb um, or you're afraid to ask, well, it's just going to be us in this very small group, right? On Zoom, no recording. So you can feel free to kind of let your hair down, so to speak. So, um, hey, KJ, what's going on? KJ's here with us on Zoom. So, anyway, let's go ahead and share my slide. So, we are all ready to go. Tonight, we're going to do basic. 12 leads and basic 12 leads is um, usually what we do day three, but we swapped it around this time. We're going to do arrhythmias tomorrow night. So we're going to focus on, this is Michelle and I, we're going to focus on really just laying the foundation of what normal EKGs look like. So this will be really good if you're a student, especially, but again, even if you're not and you just want to brush up on your skills, we're going to have a practice session at the end, like I said, and then we're going to come back into the group and Michelle is going to do a little demo of um, the 3D heart and she's going to show us another way to look at the leads and how they compare to the paper, which is always something that people struggle with. So anyway, let's get this party started now that it is officially 530 on the dot PSD. Also, hopefully by now you have also uh, figured out the whole time zone situation which I know stymies a lot of folks. And uh, basically, if you're Eastern, you add on three hours. Central, you add on two. And Mountain, you add on one. That's kind of in a nutshell. If you're anywhere else in the world, and we know we, know we have a lot of um, people all over, you're going to have to look up your own time zone because I don't know. And that, I don't know. Okay, here we go. 
So uh, first, first things first, um, this is actually, oh, that's interesting. It was like a transition slide. So this is the scholarship we're going to give away tomorrow night on the live session. So this tomorrow night's definitely a night to be live. But we were originally giving this scholarship away for somebody who was very helpful. And uh, we now do not have chats available anymore because we had to delete them because of the spammers. So now we're gonna be giving it away to somebody who um, tonight and tomorrow we're gonna be watching who is super helpful just in the group and on the Zoom if anybody needs help or um, is very, um, you know, who um, encourages your people that may feel unsure, right? We want you to show community. We want you to um, be kind to your fellow student who's in this course with you. And that's what we're looking for. That's who's gonna win the scholarship to be in the 30 day EKG challenge with us that starts on Thursday, where we do this, but we go deeper. So we'll be talking about a little bit more about that at the very end, if you wanna learn what that's about, and if you would be interested in the scholarship opportunity. And I give this away in the name of my dad who passed last year, and I do it every time now because um, his spirit was to, to give and to make sure that um, everybody was really nice. Um, you know, basically. Okay, so let me see if I can share my screen again. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Michelle, can you see it? Not yet. Oh, okay, so weird. Um, hmm. Try again, share my screen. So in the meantime, Michelle, why don't you um, take the lead on Maybe you could show them the demo first, and that would be a good way to start, because if you can give them the 3D, um, I think that would almost be better than waiting till the end. Okay, we can do that. Yeah, sure. Okay. So <clears throat> what I like to show people is obviously we need a heart on a stick. So here is um, someone saying the audio is not clear. Is that coming from me or Jen? Yeah, let us know. Let, let me know. I have a new microphone, so I can switch over to the other one. If it's Oh, now your screen's sharing, Jen. Okay, I'm gonna take it down. Take it down, take it down. Yeah, that was acting weird. I think, uh, let's see, Irene says, okay, all is well with sound, okay. All right, I moved my microphone up a little bit, so it's a little bit higher. Okay, so what I like to do, number one, we have to start with hard on the stick, and this is hard on a stick. So he has a little <laughs> accent, it's hard on a stick. So if you've ever watched, um, I think there's a puppet show out there that used to, has a Jose and I kind of that, voice came in my head. So what I like to do is I'm looking at a 3D object. Obviously this heart is very big, but if I have a 3D object, how do we take that 3D object and then put it on paper? How is that gonna be a 12 lead? What does that mean? So my visual that I like to give people is I have a 3D object. If I take a camera, we all know that's what our phones do nowadays. They're basically cameras and I take a picture of this 3D object from all different directions. So I'm gonna take it on this lateral wall of the heart. Here's my lateral wall, because we say that's kind of this left high lateral wall. I'm gonna take a picture of the lateral wall. I'm gonna angle that camera down and look down at the heart. I'm gonna take another snapshot, click, click. I'm gonna take another snapshot down here on this low lateral wall on the side here. Click, 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 click. And our V leads are going to be right there. Two of our V leads are going to be right there on that low lateral wall. And then I'm going to take a picture of the right-hand side, this low right-hand side, and the low right-hand side, we call that fancy name, inferior aspect of the heart. This is my inferior aspect of the heart down here. And I'm actually going to take three snapshots of that. I'm going to take lead two and lead three and lead AVF. I'm gonna angle my camera. So there's gonna be an electrode on my body. There's gonna be an actual electrode on my physical body that's gonna take that picture. So one electrode down in that left lower limb, when I put that on my person, that is gonna be taking a picture. It's just gonna be angled because the camera, the machine is gonna say, oh, I'm in lead two. I'm gonna angle the camera like this. Lead three, I'm gonna angle the camera like this. ABF, I'm gonna angle the camera like this. So when you're talking about axis, that's where you get that from. So I'm angling the camera, but I'm taking three different pictures of this area of the heart. Then I'm gonna take a picture of the front of the heart in V1 and V2. 
So when we look at V1 and V2, these are the, gonna be those electrodes right here on the front of the heart. And you can see they match up with our coronary arteries. So I'm gonna take a picture of that V1 and V2 here in the front and the V3 and V4. Take all those pictures, snap, 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 lay them down on that 12 lead. And now I have a panoramic picture of that heart. But you notice when I did that, I did not do anything to the back of the heart. I did not take a picture of the back of the heart. So when we start talking about reciprocalness, we get an assumption that something's going on in the back of the heart because we know the coronary arteries that are on the front, this right coronary artery also goes around and perfuses the back of the heart. And in some patients, those would be the patients that are right dominant. Some patients, the left circumflex comes around and it's the one that's perfusing the back of the heart and makes that um, posterior descending. So you're either perfusing your back of your heart from your right coronary or from your left coronary. And then there's a very, very small percentage of patients that have both, they're co-dominant and they have a little bit of both perfusing the back of the heart. We don't really know until you get into the cath lab, who's the actual one that is perfusing the heart? Is it the right, is it the left? We don't really know but you get an assumption that something's going on in the back of the heart. We don't actually take a picture of the back unless we know something's wrong. Once we decide we know something's wrong, then I have more little leads and we actually put those on the heart itself and we take a picture of the back of the heart. So there'd be one more, but I just don't have one more little finger here. V7, V8, and V9. So that's what we would do to take all those pictures. And then, and then, but wait, there's one more, the very, very most important lead, the most important lead is AVR. It's the one that's sitting up here on the top of the heart, up here on the right shoulder, AVR for right. And we, for years and years, thought AVR is just kind of a placeholder. Nobody really knows what it does. Um, we may use it a little bit for um, arrhythmias, but now we're finding out there is so much going on with AVR. In fact, that one is the one that camera up there on that right corner, that right um, aspect of the heart is the one that we, we look at first on the 12 lead. And I compare it with lead one, uh, excuse me, I compare it with lead V1. And I look to see what they look like, if they're in tandem with each other, because they're both kind of similar, but a little bit different. And then we know if something's going on with that LAD. So super important. ABR, we give her lots of respect, ABR for respect, give her lots of respect because she's right up here and she's taking a good little picture of that left main um, coronary artery. Okay, Jen. Thank you, Michelle. That was so um, amazing. So type in the chat um, if that was helpful for you guys. Let us know. What do you think? Was that helpful? Uh, looks like we uh, are screen sharing and extremely helpful. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, great. So um, let's get moving on. And thanks, guys, for um, <laughs> for um, letting us show you our our quirky ways of remembering things. I know that Matt is probably really super happy. He's getting a heart on the stick as the winner from last night. Um, so yeah, awesome. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do our main lesson here in the in the room together, and then we're gonna go into our breakouts. So, okay. Um, this was the scholarship we are talking about, the one month scholarship with us in the 30 day EKG challenge as my sweet dad right there um, a long time ago, um, but this will be given away in his honor tomorrow night. And in the meantime, we're gonna just talk about is the software machine the software that interprets the whole EKG, is it even correct? And so it turns out that the words that are printed on the top are a lot of times wrong and they can be steering you in the wrong direction or they can give you a false positive. Either way is bad. And if you think about those odds, it's only right six to 42% of the time. Are we allowed to be right six to 42% of the time? No, absolutely not. So what does that mean for you? it means that you actually have to look at the EKG on your own. One of our uh, instructors in our 30 day EKG challenge, he's our smartest coach um, of EKGs ever in the world, David, David White. He tells his partners, he's paramedic, he tells his partners just fold down the top. He doesn't even wanna see what the machine has to say because it'll sway him sometimes in the wrong direction. So he looks at it with his clean, fresh eyes and we'll show some examples of uh, the software tonight. 
And what do you need to do to get it right? So you actually have to know the, the normal. So we're gonna focus on what normal is tonight. And also I can tell you that statistically, the closer an EKG is to being normal, the more chance it has of being right. Meaning if, it's, if it really is a normal EKG, it will usually pick up normal sinus and it will usually get the intervals right, but not always. Okay, so um, here's the thing. Here's Remington, our, our STEMI reading EKG German Shepherd. And he says, know what normal is. So he says all of our T waves, this is a really big thing, should be upright. We showed you an example of that yesterday. Should be upright except for lead AVR, Michelle's favorite lead, and V1. Okay, those are the two that should be inverted or upside down. If a T wave is upside down somewhere else, it's usually a problem. Clue number one, okay? You also have to have a clean EKG, no artifact. The artifact can really mess up the interval reads. And you also have to make sure that you scan those intervals that they're normal. And we talked a little bit about one of the intervals last night. We talked about the QT. We talked about what was normal for it. And we talked about when to worry. And we also had a workbook sheet on that. And so somebody asked me last night, I don't think she was in our session for the workbook part. She asked me to post the answers. So the answers are in the group also, by the way. All right. And lastly, you want to make sure that your EKG, the family is intact. So the mom, dad, baby, they are all holding hands along the EKG. If they're not, there's a problem and we need to sort out what it is. It's usually a heart block um, if they're not, or something is amiss and you need to investigate a little further. So the normal EKG, here, here's an example of one. Now, I would honestly argue, looking at this, that there's a little artifact down here. Would you guys agree? There's some artifact here on lead three. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, that's a really cool thing, uh, Leanne. Leanne just said on Zoom, I heard once that people who work in banks know how to identify fake money because they know what real money looks and feels like. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. Um, so yeah, you guys do agree that this is artifact. So the question in your mind when you're deciding what to do with the artifact is, does it interfere with two things? Okay, so you have to ask yourself, can you see a discrete P? And then the other thing is, can you actually see the ST elevation if it's there? So if you look over here, you definitely can see the ST segment just fine. And you can see a P. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, I can see a P here, right? But if I wasn't sure, I could do my trick where I go from here, where I definitely see a P and draw a line all the way down. That also helps me verify that's my P. Now, as Michelle just showed you, this is a very important concept. Michelle just showed you how that you're looking at the EKG or the heart one moment in time, and you're looking at it from basically 12 different views. And those 12 different views are what you're seeing there on the 12 lead. And that's what we're, we're looking at. Now, what's, what's great is that we can usually get confirmation in other leads of what's going on. So like for here, you could see in lead one, a beautiful, perfect T wave. And when you draw your line all the way down, you're like, yep, that's also my P, right? And the same thing would be true, for example, if you were to use over here, right? You could see a P here, go all the way down. And so that just helps you confirm that you are seeing a P. Now, there are some times where perhaps you may not think you see a P, like for example, I don't know, over here in let's say AVF, okay? So if you weren't sure, you can definitely go to a different lead and find out. The whole key is that because you have so many views to choose from, and you're looking at the same thing in time. You just have to see it enough in a couple other leads. You don't have to see it in all, it's still there, is the moral of the story. So that's a kind of cool thing to understand. And then the other thing, if you go over back to what we were talking about over here, AVR and V1, the, the T waves are inverted and then they're upright in every other lead. And that's what we were talking about. Now, this becomes super important when we start talking later, um, like if you're in our 30-day EKG challenge, we talk about what those things can mean and why inverted T waves are bad. Um, and, and really, there's no good reason, okay? There's no good reason. All right, so going back, we talked about all of that. And then lastly, I, I do really wanna make a big point about this, okay? So um, 
there's a segment and I want to ask you guys a question. Have you heard before of the TP segment? We didn't talk about it last night, but type in the chat if you've heard about it before. I know if you're, you've been in our 30 day EKG challenge, you know about this already, but if, if you haven't, and maybe you've never heard that, let me know. Just curious, taking a little poll because it's arguably one of the most important segments on the whole EKG. If you haven't heard of it, and some of you I can see haven't, this is where it is. It's at the end of the T to the beginning of the P. Okay, end of the T, beginning of the P. This segment, we use it for two things on the EKG. We use it to see if there's um, it's the isoelectric line. It's like the most, I don't know, the truest north is the way I kind of learned it. It's, it's your flattest line. It's where you go to really assess. So yeah, lots of people in Zoom and Facebook haven't heard it and that's okay. I hadn't heard about it till very late in my EKG life, but it's so helpful because when you're ever wondering if you have like a hot mess of an EKG, I don't know the other way anyone say it, you're like, I don't know where to really look, but that's where you look. You look in the TP and you line up your straight line, which let me show you that, okay? I, I put one in the middle of the EKG, but you line up the straight line and you look for elevation, or depression in your ST segment, which is over here. We talked about that last night, right? The big, the ST. So when you need to find out if there's very subtle ST segment elevation, you go to the, the TP and that's where you start to draw your line. So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully that kind of resonates with you guys so you have a better understanding of what we are dealing with. Okay, now this is a great example of an EKG that we actually use this one. <laughs> we use this EKG in our 30 day EKG challenge and we actually color code it in our big workshop we do. But I also use this to share with people that look, it says that there's a normal ECG and it's not normal. And there's two things that are not normal on here. No, they're not. Well, they could be a big deal, okay? The first thing I'll just show you is over here in this PR interval. So remember we said yesterday um, that the PR should be 120 to 200, okay? Remember we said that? So that's actually a short PR interval, right? So if it's short, um, and also V2 T wave, yes, yes. So I love it. I'm not sure if I'm saying your, your name right, but Mr. Nandy, um, you are spot on. That was the next place I was going to go with that. So um, if you, but I want to stick with that for a second. If you have a short PR interval, you need to look for a delta wave. Okay. You don't have one, but you need to look for it. Now, the other thing is, uh, yes, the V2 is, is inverted and that's not normal, but you can ask the question, of the sister leads. So the leads that are fed by the same artery, which would be obviously uh, V3 and V4, which are fed by the left anterior descending. And you would ask, is there inversion there too? There honestly is an inversion here. So technically this really isn't normal, um, but the machine thinks it is. So you have to really, this is just proof. You have to really kind of scan your EKG and um, don't take the surface face value at what it is because sometimes it's something different. Um, okay. Let me see if I, I can make our slides. There go. Okay. So also I'm um, talking about the sections of the EKG, right? Michelle kind of alluded to with her camera, which was so helpful. Um, where she talked about two, three and EVF being the inferior leads. She talked about, you know, V1 and V2, where she used the camera to show you the subtle leads on the front of the heart. And then she also, um, talked about the anterior, she showed us that. And then she also talked about the lateral leads, which are one AVL, V5, and V6. So that's probably a review for most of you. Um, and then also the QTC is on the long side. So actually, I'm so glad you said that, Cheyenne, because so technically QT over 450 is too long for a man, right? But I would argue that at 457, people aren't going to really do anything at that point. And, and usually when it starts getting like a little higher, they might adjust the medications. Like if they're thinking about giving a QT for longer, they might not, right? But at 457, if you, if you know that women live at 460 and up for higher, then 
I usually teach, I don't usually split hairs. I usually just teach people 460 because it's easier. And since we don't do anything between the 450 and 460 range, but technically you are right. It is prolonged, but it's just not enough to get super excited about. So I do want to show you also something called the 10 step system that we use in our group. And if you've been in any of our challenges before, you might've heard this, but it's a good chance to review. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about STEMI and then go into our breakout sessions. So um, we're trying to keep this session a little shorter than last night, because last night we had so much to teach you guys. Now the 10 step system, um, and you can see Michelle over here with her heart, it's just so cute. Um, the 10 step system is based on making sure you, I like to think of it as you stay in your lane. Now, if you have ever, uh, you know, ridden a horse in a busy city, you'll notice they have blinders on. And the reason is because they have to learn to like ignore the other's distracting stuff. They have to keep their eye on what they're doing. Otherwise, they can be unsafe, which is the same for us. We are just like those horses. And this puts blinders on us so that we don't miss the important things. Now think about this. When you go and you get an EKG handed to you, I almost feel like what happens is we get squirrel brain and the squirrel brain, meaning like we, we look and we like a couple things happen. Number, especially when you're new, you're like, oh my gosh, someone's handing this to me. I don't wanna do this. It's too scary, there's too much. It's probably one thing that's going through your mind. And then the next thing, once you start to get a little comfortable with them and you're like, okay, these are kind of cool. Then your, your eye starts to go to what's the cool thing on the EKG. Or, and if you see like a biphasic T wave, you just go straight there. If you see, you know, a peak T, you're like, oh, peak T, I found something. And, and your blinders are off. And when you do that, you can easily miss you can easily miss the big stuff. And I've had, so just to give you a frame of reference, this happens to everyone. I've had a um, PA who was a 30 year PA and he came to me and he said, please, I need to do some one-on-one -on -one training with you because I'm losing my doc in my practice. It's just gonna be me. And I don't feel confident with EKGs. So I was like, okay, let's do it. So we got on. And I put up an EKG and I, I always do this whenever I first start working with somebody, I'm like, okay, show me, just tell me what you see. Cause I want to see how their mind works. I want to see what system they use already in place because you'll be surprised. Everybody has kind of a different way and that's okay. As long as you get the right answer, but he had an EKG where he, his eyes went to the cool place. They went to the biphasic T waves, which honestly is good to recognize those, but but he missed a STEMI, okay? And I specifically put a STEMI on that EKG with the biphasic T was because I wanted to make sure he would use his 10 step system. I kept telling him, you have to start from one. And he's like, no, 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 I'm good. I am gonna use my own system. I was like, okay, but you're gonna miss things if you don't use an organized system. So this is a hard stop in the very beginning where it says big sick, little sick. So what does that mean? If you have a STEMI, you're not going to do all the rest of the things except for step six. That's it. Because really, you, you, if you have a STEMI, right? And you're down there and you're like, ooh, the T wave, it's kind of big. You know, like you're like, you're mucking around over there and they're having a STEMI. That's time is muscle. So at the end of the day, you can't miss that. You have to do the big sick, little sick. So if it says STEMI, it's big sick. If it says Isisily, it's a big sick, but you would know that, right? If it's uh, VTAC or um, if it's VFib, those are all big six. So in a nutshell, that's it. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to look at the rate, okay? So if you've determined they're not a STEMI, then you gotta look at the rate. And then you gotta look at the rhythm, the intervals, which is part of the axis is the intervals. Then you're gonna go and do your ST segments to make sure you're not missing any elevation or depression. You're going to line up with your TP segment. And I know a lot of you right now are like, oh my God, this is so much. It's like a fire hose. But, but you can rewatch this. And honestly, once you get some practice at this, it becomes kind of automatic. And you can even write this down because we have a page in your workbook where you can write this down and practice writing it down. P.S. If any of you are like, okay, why am I coming to this EKG class? 
and there's a workbook. Like, I don't want to do more work. Well, first of all, it's optional. But second of all, it's because when you write something down in your own writing, you remember it. I've heard 25% more. I've heard 50% more. Either way, you remember it more. So it helps you to write it down. You could even mix up the steps if you want, honestly, like except for big, sick, little sick. Now, the next thing you're going to do, look how big your T waves are. Okay. Small or big. We talked about that last night. You're going to analyze the T waves for any problems, big T waves or biphasic. You're going to scan for Q waves. You're going to look to make sure your P and your QRS are married, holding hands, and that your QRS complex is not too wide. And then finally, you're going to do something called a chief complaint based approach, where you're going to look at the, the patient. You're going to look for any, um, if they have like a shortness of breath, you're going to look for an S1, Q3, T3, right? You're going to look for a STEMI. You're going to look for big R waves, meaning do they have big ventricles? So there's lots of little chief complaint based things we can do. Okay. So let me see if there's anybody in the chat that I missed. Michelle has a clock system. Yes, she does have a clock system. And it's kind of based on this actually. All right. So let's practice this on this EKG together. All right. So first things first. Uh, we're going to say big sick or little sick. So do we have a STEMI? No, we don't have a STEMI accusation. Um, do we have any um, thing that's like jumping off the page? That's like, I need to go to the ER right now. No, we don't. Okay, so the next thing would be looking at the rate, uh, which I actually think I cut off accidentally up here. But if you were to march it out with our 300 rule, it's it's somewhere in the 70s. And once you get really good at this, you can just look and be like, oh yeah, that's too, too fast, that's too slow. But of course it's probably around 70. Now the rhythm down here, we would look at that, right? We have two choices, but I always like lead two. Somebody asked about that yesterday. I like lead two and we would be looking for, is there a P? Yes, there is. Is the R to R regular? And yes, it is. So there's a P wave, it's regular. And the QR, the P and the QRS are the same distance away from each other. The QRS is not too wide. That's part of the intervals, right? It's 106. It if it's under 120, we're still good. Um, and technically, um, you're also going to look um, rate rhythm intervals, and you're, you're deciding it's a normal sinus rhythm. Okay, so that's easy. It's not an AFib, and you're happy about that. And also, you have a PR interval, which also means it's probably not AFib. Okay, so then you're going to scan your ST segments and go through the rest of your intervals, but looking for any ST elevation. So you would basically line up with your TP, go across the whole EKG. I'm not going to do it tonight because we don't have enough time, but you do that with all the leads. And then you'd also look the voltage of the R waves. The, the, the chief complaint was chest pain. Actually, was neck pain on this gentleman. And you'd uh, finally look at the uh, T waves. Now, does anybody see anything wrong with the T wave? And while you're scanning this, this EKG, I just wanna say, A, there's nothing in the software interpretation about the T waves. Yes, it says we have an incomplete right bundle branch block, but at this point, it's not significant, okay? But is there anything wrong with the T waves? And keeping in mind, if you think about the mom as the P, the QRS is the dad, the T wave is the baby, the mom should be small, the dad should be super tall, and the baby should be kind of small. But that's not really being followed here. So Sarah, yes, thank you, Sarah. You're amazing. Sarah says the T waves are big. And you are so, so right now. These T waves were the predictor of what was to come for him and why we actually spend so much time on these darn T waves. I say darn T waves. I actually love the T waves, but Teresa said she doesn't like the amplitude. Yes, the height of the T in comparison to their QRS, they are too big. Okay. If you see this pattern of a T wave that's too big, they are called exactly comal, hyperacute. And Mr. Nandy also said ischemia most probably, and you guys were both spot on. So great job. This patient ended up actually never having chest pain, just neck pain with exertion. And he ended up, believe it or not, needing a cabbage. And um, he is actually, uh, he had a normal Lexi scan stress test, which 
was the most frustrating part of them all. Uh, can you repeat who is mom, dad, and baby? Sure. So uh, the mom is the P. The QRS is the dad and the T is the baby. And they are all just holding hands together and the baby should never be taller than the dad. Okay, so that was the take home on this. And that's kind of how to use your 10 step just to make sure you don't miss anything, okay? And um, so let's talk a little bit about STEMI. And the STEMI is, you have to understand this concept real quick. So STEMI stands for ST elevation. And I'm, I'm gonna try to keep this super basic, but the criteria for STEMI, ST elevation MI, myocardial infarction, is that you have to have what are called contiguous leads, elevation and contiguous leads. And you need to have some reciprocal changes. So the ST segment depression. Now, um, Michelle does a whole class on this with that um, heart on a stick. And um, she does like a whole hour and a half in her 30 day EKG challenge on this. But basically um, it's it takes some time to understand where the reciprocal leads and contiguous changes are. But basically, understanding that you have to understand the anatomy. You have to understand what artery feeds what part of the heart to understand who the mirror image is. So here is a graphic that shows you basically, yeah, as KJ says, two and two. Um, here's a graphic that shows you basically, um, you know, what you're looking at as far as blood supply. And, you know, you can, you can look at this graph, graphic all day long. And I will tell you that I, I too, uh, when I was first learning EKGs, I looked at this and I was like, this is a tall drink of water. Like, how am I ever supposed to remember this? There is no way on top of all my other medical knowledge that I'm ever going to remember this. So here's the real trick. You can take a picture of this and save it. You can write it down. But for me, and if you're a visual learner, you have to actually understand, not just memorize. And I think that's true with a lot of this cardiac stuff. You have to understand that memorize. So what does that mean? You have to actually really, you have to sink your teeth into it. Like you have to understand with a 3D model, I really think that's key and how that corresponds to the piece of paper. Because once you can make that connection, then you can almost anticipate what the reciprocal change is gonna be. And it's, um, now that I'm on the other side of this graphic, like I understand, I wish I would have been taught on the 3D model, not out of this. This is hard. I will tell you it's hard. So the way to make it easy is learning the 3D aspect of this. But here it is just for your reference if you'd like it. So let's do um, a little practice case real quick and then we'll be ready to jump into breakouts. So this is a 71 year old male. He has chest pain. This is not a real patient's face, but he said his PQRST, you always ask the PQRST. He said, hey, um, it feels like, uh, what provoked it is it feels like a pressure. Um, it was lifting a heavy box. So that's exertional chest pain and quality. It feels exactly like my same MI. Okay, literally, guys, stop, drop, and rule. Okay, meaning if you see this in a history and you are hearing like, oh, he's had cardiac stents before. He's had this pain for three days. It goes to his jaw and his back and his left arm. Like literally, I don't even care what your EKG says, friend, because you're not staying in my clinic. You're going to the emergency room. It's just a matter of what your EKG says and how you're going to get there, right? Ambulance or like whatever. But this history, whenever somebody says, it feels like my last heart attack, please, please, please believe them. I have had very few patients be wrong about that. And we just didn't give them enough credence. Once you've already needed one stent, there's a high likelihood you're going to need another. So yes, probably emergency room and calf. Leanne says, absolutely. I always ask you, it feels like the chest pain uh, is caused by heart attack last time and believe them. And they could have occluded stents. Mr. Nandy, you are so spot on. That's entirely possible, especially if they didn't do all the things you asked them to do, like to take their statin and to exercise and eat right and all the things. So uh, here's his EKG and we get to practice a STEMI EKG, which is so exciting. Okay, so let's do this together. Now, first things first, we see that we have a STEMI accusation here. 
So the accusation, we have a STEMI. Okay, step number two. We don't do our 10 steps, right? We go straight to the ST segment. So let's grab our pen. Let's do that. They're saying, hey, it's in the inferior wall. Go there first. Okay, machine, I will actually listen to you. And we know we're gonna go down here to the inferior leads three, ABF, and also lead two. And do I have two leads of elevation? Yes, I do. Are they contiguous? Yes, they're fed by the same artery. So now I got to go look around for my reciprocal changes. And you can see that we actually do have two and two, um, two and two. Okay. Two leads of elevation, two leads of depression. So literally we're done. This patient's a STEMI and we're not going to do any more of the 10 steps. They are going to go to the, um, to the ED and they're going to go by ambulance. So you're going to call them and give them aspirin and potentially give them nitro. Although this one you may want to make base contact on if you're going to do nitro, if you are an, an EMS folk. Um, okay. So Emily says inferior STEMI um, or reciprocal changes. I agree. And uh, one in ABL. Yes, Kamal, you are so smart, Kamal. And KJ says two and two STEMI. Right. Awesome. So anyway, that's the practice. Now this obviously um, takes some time to really, to really get it. But, um, but yeah, anyway, that was super fun. And yeah, there may be posterior involvement. I think um, that Michelle just added that on and you're probably right, Michelle. Okay, so now it is time for us to go to the breakout sessions. And um, what we're gonna do is we're going to um, go into a session. Some of you will be with Michelle, some of you will be with me. If you're on Facebook, please go to Zoom so you can hop in with us. And then we'll meet back at the end in the main group. All right, so we're going to get moved over in just a moment, Tito. About, All right. about 20 minutes, Jen? Um, yes. Okay. May, yeah, maybe a little bit more. We'll, okay. we'll just see how it goes. Hello, hello, everybody. We are back for the rest of our session. What's up, what's up? I think uh, people are still coming back. So hopefully you guys had a good good learning session. And um, oh, all my people here, there's LaWanda and PS and KJ, Angela. Um, I think we might still be waiting for Michelle's people. There they are. Okay, everybody's coming back. Hey, Michelle, you're on mute, but let's, let's hear what your group had to say. Heck, yes, they got every one of those EKGs right, Jen. They were like on top of it. It was awesome. Wow. They're smart. Are you, are you so proud of them? Yes. They're I, like, I do. This. I wrote this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So that's amazing. Was there any questions that came up in your session? Um, no, not in chat. I don't think so. They did okay. the, we did RVR um, and the Brigadas. They had Brigadas down like hat. Is it because of your shirt? I wonder. Ah, uh, maybe. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Skelly, Skelly doesn't have brigadas. He just has a zebra, which surprises me because it's your favorite. I know, but I don't have a. I don't have an embroidery pattern that matches it. I'm sure you will eventually. Um, so, guys, let me show you um, the prize for tonight, really quick, before I go full screen. Um, so, the prize tonight that we're going to be giving away is actually this EKG workshop kit. So exciting! So. What's in this thing and why do you want to win it? Well, let me show you. So first of all, we have probably my favorite part of this is we have a little mini painting uh, that comes with an easel and this actually can go on your desk to remind you of um, how much fun you had in this class. This one actually says hopeful. Yeah, Michelle has some artwork behind her, just a little bit, just a little. <laughs> We're also gonna send you in this kit a little workbook of real EKGs that you can go through and work out on your own. They're not like out of a book. So they're not perfect. They're actually like real. There's 17 of these. And um, yeah, if you uh, if you win this, you'll get all of these EKGs to practice with. Now, the other thing you're gonna get is some crayons. So you can color code the leads, okay? There's a blue, red, and green in here. And we actually use these in our 30 day EKG challenge. When we color code the EKG, you're gonna get a tool. So a lot of you saw we played a lot with the ST segments tonight. This tool is called an RCAT window, and you actually can 
use this to see if there's SD elevation or depression, which is so cool. Yes, it's helpful for visual learners. And there's also a couple other things in here, a cheat sheet um, that I have all the answers to all of life's problems on, including an axis chart. And there's um, there's also a normal sinus EKG that we actually go over together in our 30 week EKG challenge and we color it. But one lucky person is going to win this. So if you want this, this has a value of $40. Um, and if you want this, one lucky person is going to win. So in the Facebook group, please not in Zoom. Um, you're going to <laughs> you're going to type hashtag 30 day in the, the Facebook group so I can uh, pick the winner of, from there and then announce the winner. OK, in the meantime, in the meantime, Bosma says this is excellent. Um, I do want to tell you also we're going to be giving away a scholarship tomorrow night to our 30 day EKG program. And so what that is, just to let you guys know, I'm going to be announcing that winner tomorrow night. So that is basically a class that we start on the, um, yeah, thank you, Sarah, that we start Thursday night. And we basically go through in a live fashion, more like this. And we start with the baby steps, like terminology, things like that. And so if you win, let me tell you all the things that you're going to get to participate in. So before we do that, though, let's revisit some take home points before we transition to the next section. So the president should always run the heart. That's the essay node. Um, don't trust the EKG interpretation. Always do your own read. Make sure you do your PQRST on your chest pains. And we talked a little bit about that in the breakout. Your family should always be holding hands. And of course, memorize those intervals so that you don't miss anything. Okay, good. Some people are putting 30 day in the Facebook. Awesome. Um, if you're in our 30 day EKG challenge, basically let um, people know if in the feed, if they, uh, if it's worth it, um, if it's fun, if it's helping you learn. And um, we're also going to be giving away an RCAT window badge. So Remy said, you know what? One prize is not enough. Uh, you also got to give away an RCAT badge. So if you want to win that, you're going to put hashtag RCAT and we'll give a separate prize away tonight for that. Okay. So two prizes. How fun is that? And tomorrow's prize is going to be the 30 day UKG scholarship. So I'm going to show you a couple things behind the scenes, if you would like to be entered to win for the scholarship, this is what you're going to have access to. So Thursday night, we're going to come 5.30 again, and we'll be doing a Zoom where we welcome you in and do some EKG terminology just to lay some foundation. Then we have, so this program runs year round, and we have people who stay in it for like years. So sometimes we have some guests on. We have some really great guests. We have Sarah, who's actually been on with us tonight. Um, and she works in the CVICU. She's going to do a case study for us. So amazing. And Natalia, who also works in critical care, is going to do a case study for us. And these are just like super fun. But the the 30 day is the the like basic core classes. Michelle does a whole class with hands on on the 14th. And then she does a practice of that on the 16th. So these are all recorded. If you win the, the scholarship, get access to all of these are all recorded. And then David, our EKG Mandalorian, does a study hall where he takes your EKGs you've submitted and he goes over them for you and breaks them down. And he's literally so kind and so wonderful. Then you can, you know, you still have time if you get in this week to submit EKGs for the next time and he'll cover those in his breakdown for you. Then on the 18th, we're gonna do a three hour workshop where you're gonna use the EKG in the box. We're gonna color them with our crayons and we're gonna go through them step-by-step step and also some other cool things like how to spot pulmonary embolus, the five things that you need to spot on the EKG when it says non-specific ST2 wave changes that you can't miss. And that literally, that lecture alone is a game changer because right now what you don't know is that you guys are all kind of at risk when you have someone that says non-specific and you don't know what to look for. And there's five really bad things um, that I'm going to share with you. And we have actual examples in our workbook. So then on the 19th, we're going to do a study hall where it's going to be more like, how do we do differentials? How do we do medical decision-making? What kind of testing should we do? We're going to like do all the things for the priority complaints, like chest pain, shortness of breath. And then a very special lecture coming up on the 22nd, which has never been done before in our class. Michelle is going to do a vasoactive drugs class. Super fun. Now, um, in addition, we also have several guests who come and they're coming at the end of the month, who is Gary, if you've seen him in this group before, he does this whole thing on like animations and how to really put the 12 lead together with what you're seeing. And he does some dynamic stuff too. 
Um, and that's super fun. That's the only session that's not recorded in is the 26th, but everything else is. And then we have on the 25th, we have Arrhythmia's practice with Coach Sean, and we have a lipid specialist, Whitney, who comes in and does lipid cases for us. So we get practice on that. Mm -hmm. So like this is going to be basically an EKG party, but extra snacks in case you're interested in things that are cardiology based. So that's what we love. So we'll be giving away one of these tomorrow night to you. Um, but obviously, if you don't win, you can join us anyway. Uh, we make it super affordable for you and you get 12 hours of category one CE. Um, and we also have just FYI, we have and you'll have access to this as a scholarship winner. We have the past two and a half years of all the classes we've done that are recorded and you can watch them at your leisure. So like if you come in and you're all, hey, um, I really want to learn med math. Do you have a class on that? We do. And we can tag you in it. Or, hey, I really want to learn about stress testing. Do you have a class in that? Yeah, we do. We can we can share it with you. And we have all the class indexed so you can see where things are. And so anyway, um, do we have a link for all the handouts to print out ahead of time? So Angela, um, I do. Um, and you can just message me in Facebook Messenger and I'll get them right to you. Okay, Angela has been on our 30 day, I think. I think you're on your three, Angela, which is so nice to have you in with us. So these are all the things, well, there's some of the things that we have in our recordings. There's tons of things, but of course you get the free mini painting, the workbook, the crayons. Um, and this time around, you actually get a binder. Um, if you sign up, sign up. Um, the scholarship winner does not get the binder's kit, but you will also get one of these. This is the last time we're doing these. Um, there's a whole binder that comes with um, places to put your, file your stuff. So like if you have your workbook, we punched holes for you. So you could put it in your nice little workbook that has a cover. So you can store everything so neat and nice and organized. And then of course you also get that bonus tool, which is the RCAT tool. So it's so cool. Um, so the prices are, if you don't win the scholarship tonight, just to give you a heads up, because I know some of you will want to get on this. Um, if you don't win tomorrow, the student rate, you don't need any CE. You can literally get in for six months with us for 149, which is a steal. Okay. Nowhere else in the whole industry right now do you have a place where you can go and get live human help and also recorded classes? It's like a hybrid program. Yes, you have self paced, but also you have humans, which is so nice. If you're EMS and you need CE, it's 149, RNs is 249, and PRNP is 299. And all of this stuff is shipped out to you ASAP. And of course, yes, we can print out the links. No problem. Like Angela said, if uh, your kit doesn't arrive in time, we can definitely do that. So you get all these things, right? Um, so you definitely want to put your name in the running for this scholarship, which we're giving away tomorrow night. And then, of course, if you don't win, if you don't win, you can obviously join us. So um, I think we have some people in the comments. Um, will we have access? So yes, Abby. This is going to be stored as well as last night in the guide section, and those will stay up so you can rewatch them. And Sarah says worth the price. Sarah is actually definitely one of our instructors in the group. Uh, we love her so much. Um, Tori dropped the link. Thank you for that. And Darlene, if you would like to participate, um, you can use that link that Tori gave you. And um, if you are requesting the, to join the group, you actually need to purchase the course, otherwise you won't get into the group. Um, David is on another level, Matt, and KJ has been around since February. Um, and yeah, looks like I think all the questions are answered. So I think that's it. Will tomorrow be recorded? Basma, yes, actually it will be. And, um, yes, Katie was our scholarship winner, I think last time. And, uh, yeah, that was super fun, um, to have her in with us and the scholarship would be amazing. It's on my bucket list. Okay, so we're going to be back tomorrow at um, 5.30 again, PST. We are giving one scholarship, Irene, one scholarship, giving it tomorrow. And then after that, you'll know who the winner is. And then if you didn't win, you can still grab your spot. But we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to do arrhythmias tomorrow night. We look forward to seeing everyone um, in the small groups, which is so, so fun to interact with you. I loved seeing some faces tonight. Michelle, were most people on camera with you? Um, a couple people were on camera, mostly, mostly not. 
and but they did a lot of chatting so they type right. better than I do I'm not a good chatter I'd rather come off mute and talk because I don't know how to chat type that fast oh that, yeah we don't care how you communicate we just want you to get the most out of the class so anyway Irene says thank you and Kamal says thank you uh we we say thank you to Kamal because Kamal you brought so many friends with you here that we're just so grateful that we could help um help everybody and thank you guys so much we'll see you tomorrow uh the zoom is the same uh we'll be of course um putting it in the feed again and an email goes out in the morning if you're on our email list to join us so thank you Michelle especially for your um breakout session time and for your wonderful demo in the very beginning and for making a shirt for Skelly that is so cute Shelly his Skelly he loves it <laughs> he's really gets upgraded every time I see him <laughs> yeah, <it does. laughs> all right guys have a good night we'll see you tomorrow Bye, guys. Bye.